to be? Like, do you yeah. have a story behind them or? The story comes together as I discover uh, images um, and that's through the material. So I always look for source materials that have big kind of colorful, glossy pages or um, shapes that I can cut out that are complete, like the women, like the dresses and the image that you last saw, or like the woman at the top of that. Yeah, like these, these dresses um, I saw in like a fashion magazine, you know, and I was kind of just really drawn to the way that they were oriented uh, or they could be oriented in relation to each other. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't originally oriented this way, obviously, but. Um, right. And then so you see I, the kind of composition in your mind, right? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a feeling of something kind of like clicking um, where I can, like you said, begin to see a story form. And then I look, I guess, for the missing pieces um, of the story. And um, that might actually extend into like color. So there's like, those orbs around the birds' heads that match the color of the like sort of river in the background, um, and and then I you know I start to think about texture and pattern and things like that. Um, so at, the, at that point, it's kind of like there's a story first, and then I start to bring a composition together around it. Right. For so you're a pantser, not a plotter. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm totally yeah. not a plotter. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and like, I mean, because my life, I'm making these as my life goes on, like there are kind of different reasons for making each one too. Some of these I made like while I was at a residency thinking about like homelessness, you know? So those have like a different timbre than something like that, which is more like carefree, like that. This image, you know, obviously has a different sort of emotional tenor. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, made this at the end of a relationship. <laughs> you know, you could probably tell by looking mm -hmm. at it. So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely got a different tone than some of the more playful, colorful images. I love this one. Yeah, um, this one I was really just obviously thinking about levity and like um, the like kind of feeling of the of vertigo that I get looking down at that beach, but then it's thrown sideways by the orientation of the airplane because it shouldn't mm -hmm. quite look that way, you know, unless it was. Right. Like, Making like a deep cut or like a you know turning right. a hard angle or something but it kind of feels I don't know mm -hmm. right and wrong at the same time if that makes sense right right no it's like the there's and that I mean I think that that's the kind of thing that's like really interesting you know it combines in terms of like the marketability of a print like this like it combines uh, just sort of a vintage kind of interesting subject like a you know Boeing 707 um and it puts it in this context of like wait this is like not quite right so it's a little disorienting and also like intriguing at the same time mm -hmm. um and it's just really nice colors um so i really like this piece a lot um and um i like this piece a lot too there's a lot so there's like you know art that's interesting and then there's art that's like interesting and also like people will probably buy it and those end up being you know yeah. sometimes two different things right mm -hmm. um and yeah. so when i talk about like what what has the potential for um you know maybe more mass market appeal it's not to say that like these works aren't all interesting it's just you know um that some people would want maybe in their homes i really like this mm -hmm. one too Mm -hmm. So um, I think one of the strong points of this work is that there's like a lot of little elements. So people tend to like work where they're sort of like, you know, pulled in, whether it be like compositionally or because there's some sort of like thing in the, in the you know, part of the subject matter that's like either aesthetically pleasing or interesting um, uh, or the colors are, you know, pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's there's sort of like layers to the onion where you're sort of like unpacking it. So mm -hmm. um, I like this one a lot too. I think it's it's kind of hard to say, but this has this I can see having a buyer to it. I love that you've got the lipstick in the background, like, but it looks like a skyline. Um, yeah. Are these, are these all different ele elements? I'm assuming, right? That you've yeah. cut out, right? 
Yeah, I think if I had to count, there would be one, two, three, four, five pieces in this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. or six, I guess, because the, yeah, the skull is the last piece. I'd be so curious. Like, I almost don't want to know, but I want to know, like, who this person yeah. is, you know? I remember. Like, yeah. Those rings and the, obviously the coat um, and, you, have, you like, know. Or something. Yeah, like it feels like, oh, is this like a stockbroker? Is this like Jeff Koons? Is this like, <laughs> you know, um, and then you're, you know. Yeah. I can't imagine it as a casino, like Las Vegas, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously like there's layers to the the symbology of, um, of having this um, bullhead um, mm -hmm. there, you know, you've got decay and also like it makes yeah. it look almost like a you know a devil um, that plays off of the aesthetic of the the man um mm -hmm. and then with that sort of like masculinity slash con artist what is going on vibe and then yeah the lipstick in the background is like really kind of subverting all of these, these yeah things. Um, in a way that I think is really interesting. So it's strong compositionally, and it also has this sort of like conceptual play to it. Um, but I think, you know, totally it's really and strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. definitely like up there for me. I really like the plane as well. Um, and I mean, I, I really love all these images, but um, people tend to want to have something that means something to them or they think it's just really pretty. So I think I would also, I would have to land on this um, mm -hmm. as like my, so these would be like my top three. So mm -hmm. let's just do. I have a question. May I yes. ask at this point? Yes. That last piece, I think I got that original, yeah, this one in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, that original, like the pink piece of the women all together, I, it, I think it came out of a magazine all as one piece and their faces were already, uh, how do you say it, like static like that. Mm. Okay, I, so you oh, didn't do any manipulation here? Not of the women, the women figures themselves. The mm -hmm. background that they're standing on um, is two pieces, I think. Mm -hmm. So, but like, but the sort of, uh, yeah, like the static in the face, I did not manipulate. I kind mm -hmm. of cut them out all as one piece. So what do you think of that in terms of like, yeah. rights? well, you know, rights to the image? Yeah. I mean, I think you've manipulated the image uh, enough, but that's not a problem in terms of that. But as you're saying this, um, I do have a potential suggestion that might make it really interesting. Like even if you took this pattern or something yeah. that mimicked this pattern and used mm -hmm. it in the faces, right. like that kind of adds another layer to it that yeah. I think could be really cool. Um, right, yeah. So you might want to think about doing something like that um, because that would make me think, I mean, there's so many ways like sort of the trick to to art, right, is that you want for people to get the impression that that the artist is is saying something, maybe even something specific, and mm -hmm. that they're trying to like solve that puzzle, but mm -hmm. at the same time making it their own experience. Like, um, so there's this sort of like engagement that lands with the viewer feeling like you know they're making their own meaning to it at the same time like trying to figure out what it is that the artist is trying to say right. so in doing something like that it's almost like and all and i'm not sure what this pattern is but it looks like mm -hmm. reptilian skin or something yeah so like putting that on the face is gonna like charge the idea of like what are these figures but it's also going to add this thing of like this reptilian thing but it's also going to be like um uh uh camouflage you know because it's like matching the background 
Yeah. Um, you know, or even whatever it is that you might end up doing if you did want to play with it some more, I think, mm -hmm. I think could really add something to it. Um, mm. But, you know, even as it is, like, it's, it's compositionally strong. It's like the colors work really well together. You're sort of like, I don't know, you know, what your intention is behind it, but my takeaway is like, okay, so we're on this like ethereal, like other planet kind of thing. We've got mm -hmm. these female figures, like pink is very sort of like girly, but then there's this like reptilian element to it. There's yeah. this like strange plane in the background. I don't know where we are. Um, <laughs> and uh, I can see people just liking it because it's weird, but it's not like so weird that people would find it maybe uncomfortable to look at, right? Because that's the other thing. Like when I'm saying that there's work that's, you know, uh, that, that, that's strong and interesting on its own, it's not always necessarily something that people want to have like in their home and be looking at it every day. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of the sweet spot is like finding something that like people like and they think is interesting and think it's cool. Uh, but it's not like going to disturb them if they have it like in their, mm -hmm. you know, living room or something. Right. Um, so uh, that kind of is like my thinking when I think through like, you know, what work I'd like to test the market with. Um, and we talked a little bit about this. It's the same kind of thing. It's like, you know, it's got these elements that people tend to like in terms of like commercial and mass appeal, like, you know, planes, trains, automobiles, like, you know, the beach, you know, it's got a vintage color to it. Uh, but then it's also just like, what's happening? Like this plane is like, mm -hmm. not, you know, going the right direction. And the mm -hmm. vertigo that you speak of, like, you know, looking down and just the kind of different angles. So I just think it's really cool. And I can see people, you know, who like planes or like travel a lot or whatever, um, you know, be, being like, oh, I think that's really, I think that's really cool. I think that's kind of weird and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. same with this one, we talked a little bit about like, you know, um, all the different elements that I think are, are, are interesting. So then the next kind of layer to it is to take these, cause they're collages, right? And um, mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend making you know, fine art, like limited edition prints from them because it allows you to do a few things. Um, mm -hmm. Like it allows you to choose the right kind of material that you're printing it on that can really make it pop and feel like, you know, an, an object, like a fine art object. And it also allows you to like um, addition multiple sizes because some people might, you know, want a smaller size some people might really like love it at, 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 a, at a big size and so it kind of opens that up you know for you versus like just the original size of the image which i'm not sure how how they are um sized originally but when you print something like this on different kinds of paper depending on the paper it adds like you know it can add texture or it can add like you know um just a different way that the color will will uh, um appear on, on the paper itself so um so since you haven't like additioned them before i would suggest doing something like three different sizes to something depending on the ratio and it'll you know change um from image to image um but you know having something that's in that like 12 by 18 that you know uh 18 by 24 and that 24 by 36 ish range um, you can also bump that up and have something that's like super big assuming that you have a good scan for it um, but it when you're additioning things you can also set your three sizes and then um, you know if somebody comes along and wants to do something super big then you can do like a one-off uh, custom uh, of that so somebody says like oh I you know I have this space on my wall that's like 60 by 80 and 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 the scan is good enough so that you can print that image at that size you can still choose to do that like as a one-time thing or um do a you know a small addition of 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 things at a larger size that are sort of out of the like norm mm -hmm. um and each piece is probably gonna have it might have 
I mean, there's a lot of variance to the work. So you might have different papers that you would choose to print them on. It could even be interesting to try something like a dye sublimation um, uh, with them, which is where um, 